Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so here in the top left-hand corner of Antigua Shipyard, sporting the red Terran trunks of a sort that is Slayer's Clyde. And his opponent in the bottom right cross positions is Rain Slush. He is our yellow Zerg player. And here we go for game number one of this best of nine to, de de to determine who stays in Team Arena Challenge. What? <laughs> no, just kidding. Cool. Um, <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be a good night of casting. Okay, so Clyde playing under the ID Mavengeance. 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 I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. I have no clue. But anyway, uh, and Slush, of course, his name is Rain Slush, which it dawned on me as we were entering this game that rain and slush are both types of weather that much of North America has experienced right now. Yeah. With the winter incoming. It's very slushy and rainy, but not here. Not in beautiful San Francisco. That's true. Where it never snows. This, uh, once every this years. winter has been very pleasant to me. So, yes, the last recorded snow was 1976 in San yeah. Francisco. Yeah. Doesn't get terribly warm during the summer, but the winter is very, very nice. So It's pretty cool. I feel bad for all those Minnesotans and et cetera. <laughs> We're looking at you, Doa. <laughs> shovel their driveways. Yeah, Doa, who will be joining us in 2012, he's, uh, he's in Minnesota. It's true. He only gets to experience a few weeks of a Minnesota winter. I'm sure he's disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm, he's crying his eyes out right now. I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, the game is starting to take shape a little bit here. Mavengeance, a.k.a. Slayer's Clyde, building a barracks up here at the front Very tense. of he's his base. He's going to wall that off completely, but he hasn't taken a refinery yet. He does have the cash for it, so I'm not sure exactly what's going to be next for him. Just probably some sort of a gasless one racks FE. So let's see here. As uh, Slush did decide to go for it and expand first, nothing too out of the ordinary, of course. And um, let's see here. Maybe he's going to... This is It'll have to a be map a you center. can do this against Zerg players. Now, normally, the prevailing wisdom is that you'll still just go ahead and take your gas and then move into a reactor to and expand despite the map. But the walk distance here is quite long, and you actually do have a timing where you can put the bunker up and protect against uh, Lings if there's an expand build coming at you, which Clyde, think is Lucky Stars, as he hasn't scouted yet, is actually going to get. So Clyde did go for that orbital and a fast marine, still no gas, and soon we'll be seeing the command center most likely built in base. Yeah. So that he can uh, go ahead and get that orbital up safely without worrying about zerglings or anything like that. 400 minerals. What are you going to do, Clyde? You're going to build on the low ground just to spite me. All right. Wow. That's fine. Whatever. It's risky. It's risky. It is a little riskier as Slush could be doing much faster attacks here. Of course, he is getting his hatch first up, though. We know that because we can see everything. And now Clyde knows that because he can see everything with his brave SCV. He's sending a couple of Marines just around the map to look for overlords, try and get one of those free supply kills early in the game. Yeah. Curious what Slush is going to be transitioning into next. He has not taken a gas yet either. No. Looks like he's just going to drone up quite a bit now, so he's not going to try and pressure right away with a bunch of links or anything like that. Uh, see, so it did just produce four pretty standard map control links, but his opponent, Mr. Clyde, does have double gas up now, and uh, his economy is going to be quite good. Oh, it looks like actually the uh, Marines on the left hand side were able to pick off an Overlord as well, and that's a pretty critical supply block right now. Yep, and Slush is chasing down an SCV in the middle of the map. One more bite on that guy, and he'll be toast. Toast. Oh, this guy's he's so close. Toast. Oh, Zerglings run just a fraction faster yes. than those SCVs, so you always want to uh, quite, get quite a head start Quite literally a fraction. 2.95 speed to 2.81. Yep. It's, it's, it's tiny, but it is there. It makes the difference. Which is why oh, you can man. see probes actually recover shields fast enough that if single Ling is chasing them, they'll recover their shields back before the next hit happens. But anyway, little anyway. tidbit there for people. Clyde is starting to move with a few Marines here. He is down on supply, but just a negligible amount, honestly. Uh, Slush still with only one extractor. Clyde does have both gas pumping away now, so we can kind of see their tech take shape as Clyde is getting a factory and a reactor up on that barracks. I'm wondering if he's going to end up flipping it around, and based on those positions, I have to think he is going to go for some Hellions here Definitely. in the near future. Oh, and he's going to catch himself another Overlord as well. Very, very bad for uh, Slush as he only has the supply to put up one Roach here whenever this pops. You'll have to wait a while for any subsequent ones. But he did move into that very early Roach Warren. Uh, that is coming at the cost of his economy because on two bases with double mules this early in a TVC, Slush, I'm sorry, Clyde is going to have a ton, a ton of workers out. And uh, in this case, we do have a tech lab down now on this uh, barracks. It's going to swap over to the starport here in just a bit. So he'll follow up the reactor Hellions with some Banshees. And that could make for a pretty powerful attack, especially as Slush is just producing a ton of roaches. 
yes, Slush could be in trouble if the Banshee eventually does get out and make its way across, but, um, you know, Clyde could be in trouble if those roaches get there first. Yeah, but I've got to say, Clyde is already building himself a nice little wall. Uh, pulls off a couple of workers, and he should be just fine, as he has a marine, marine patrolling back and forth as well. Indeed, we do have cloaked Banshees coming out now for Clyde. And another tech lab probably on that barracks. Yes, it is. We'll eventually swap that around as well and start increasing his barracks count here in a bit. Club Banshees are a pretty scary premise for someone who's not on Lair yet. Uh, Slush is getting a third base up right now at his you know, normal location, but all these Hellions coming out, poking forward, seeing this onslaught of roaches about to arrive at his base. He's got lots and lots of SCBs pulled to be able to repair here, so I cannot imagine Clyde actually losing anything in this push. Slush realizes that as well very quickly, actually fast enough to save that roach, so that's good for him, but yeah, uh, he's going to need to switch it up a little bit here. He has no real information on what Clyde is doing inside of his base, and that is the scariest thing for a Zerg player to not know what your Terran opponent is building. Yeah, definitely. And we have Banshee number one coming out. It looks like it's just now going to straight it. up assault <laughs> the uh, roaches. There we go, going after the hurt one as one roach does go down. And these roaches without speed are going to take forever to get back home, and several are going to fall before uh, anything goes back home. Man, already losing two roaches to that single Banshee is a good pickup uh, for Clyde, and he hasn't even reached the base of Slush yet. An yeah, evolution definitely. chamber just got started once he saw that Banshee. He's getting two more queens produced out now and Lair started, so he's playing the major catch-up game that many Zerg players have to do in this matchup as soon as a Banshee appears. Yeah, definitely, and Clyde has looked very, very good in this matchup so far, and there is the cloak. Of course, no detection going to be on the ground at all. This queen trying to retreat as fast as possible, but as soon as it gets off of creep, that's a bad thing. And nice job with the creep tour, but Clyde picking that off with really great control, slipping by with those Hellions at the same time as he forced out a bunch of lings now. No workers sitting over at the third, and Slush has to run back home and defend. Slush is going to nab a couple of these Hellions before they can do too much destruction. There's no blue flame yet, so that's actually a good thing for Slush. I didn't see any units die to those Hellions. Did Definitely. You? No, not that at all. Very good by Slush, but of course this Banshee is still the problem that he needs to <laughs> figure out what he's going to do. Uh, as he loses a Queen and a Drone, it looks like he had a couple of score colors planned there, but could not get those done in time. A couple of, actually another, just a second Banshee showing up now, picking up another Crawler, and man, I don't know what Slush is going to be able to do here. He is going for it. Bit of a counterattack with some lings checking out that third base, but of course there's nothing there to destroy. So Slush still in dire straits for the moment, gonna lose his third base. Yeah, definitely. And Clyde's going up to a third at the same time with double engineering bay and just a two factories, three barracks up. Now he is in a great spot. And this hatchery is taking a huge amount of damage. Looks like Slush slowly but surely moving forward this spore crawler. And actually, it's uprooted now. So these two banshees are going to be able to do quite a bit of damage to it. Clyde is controlled so good good right now just getting to the edge of the range of the sport crawler in style oh my god and he could get a lot of work with kills no slush does pull away in time but he is going to lose the hatchery yeah that hatch didn't really stand a chance he never even had any mining time from it really as when the hellions arrived there were no drones there um, he does have quite a few lings and roaches, but uh, it's kind of like bringing a knife to an airplane fight. <laughs> <laughs> he can't uh, he can't shoot up with those roaches. Mutalisks will be on the way here soon as the spire is getting finished up. Yes. We got plus one, plus one for those melee units uh, researching now, but it looks like Clyde is on the same game there, getting plus one, plus one for his infantry, as well as stim pack and a slew of units being created. Uh, six at a time, seven, eight at a time, nine at a time now. Yeah, now with the medevacs coming this, up in this is looking uh, worse and worse for Slush as this game continues. Yeah, definitely, and Slush sees a ton of units there and decides to immediately stop assaulting the destructible debris. Good choice. Clyde just playing a very smart game after getting ahead for so long. And he does cloak that Banshee once again. Moves out of there. He's got almost full energy on these now. Um, and Zerglings are going down. This Banshee has 11 kills, multiple roaches in there at the same time. There's just, uh, it's, it's very difficult for Slush at this moment because even if he catches up overall or pulls significantly ahead in supply, it's on all relatively low tech units. Whereas Clyde, he's gonna, whoa, no combat shield, that's a little bit of a mistake. But uh, he is gonna have 1 1 with Stim, Metavax, and a huge contention of uh, tanks coming behind him. Yeah, and Slush should be up at double digit Mutalisks at this point. Seven more just popped out, so we'll see. He's got 13 in the air total. I'm not sure exactly where they are. I was just grouping up now, but 
Uh, good move by Clyde, only investing into two Banshees, really. I think I never saw more than two on the field, and then just switching heavily back to that Tank Marine uh, combination. And with Stem, these Mutalists are going to have to be very careful, especially if they're going to waste too much time trying to chase down those Banshees. And Banshees at this point aren't the real threat anymore. It's these Siege Tanks on the ground. Yeah, certainly. That he's going to have to try and find a good position with these Mutalists to be able to take out. Yeah, I definitely agree. So those Mutalists are starting to float away. Um... And one does go down, it really hasn't inflicted too much damage yet. It forced a little bit of mispositioning out of Clyde and to abandon the spot in the middle, but he is already sieged up with a good number of his tanks, and Slush is going to lose so many Mutalists. He picks off a couple of siege tanks there, but at the loss of virtually his entire Muta pack, not all the roaches have gone down, and look at that, Clyde even wow. somehow keeping those tanks alive. Slush is just in such a bad spot. So a good move that Clyde did just now was when the Lynx uh, swooped in there for those tanks, he moved all his Marines away from the tanks. You'll see a lot of times players just leave them where they lie, mm -hmm. and Sea Tanks will blast those Marines to pieces. He knows uh, perhaps that he forgot his combat shield earlier. He's getting them now, but he moved them away. Ling's actually coming in and finishing everything off. That's a result of not enough medevacs and repeated use of stim pack there, but those Marines still did plenty of damage to that third base and is preventing Slush from being able to catch up economically. Yeah, and Clyde just does not see any Banelings out there as well, so he has basically a uh, mass Marine behind this. Yes, he's still double producing tanks, but his marine count is just soaring at the moment. He's almost maxed, which is actually insane. A counterattack coming in for Slush, but that's just killed immediately. And uh, one tank did go down. Another almost fell as well. But there it is. GG. Slush has left the game. And Clyde has taken game number one for Slayers. Susan Jung.